Could these two movies be cryptic warnings to society to reveal to us where we are heading in the near future? We're going to talk about it tonight. Let's get after it. The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. All right, what's going on, everybody? This is End Time Headlines, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. This is uh, your host, Ricky Scabrell, the founder and the voice of End Time Headlines, and it is Thursday, March 21st. We want to welcome everybody to the program. If you're watching uh, visual by YouTube, by Rumble, or whatever, however you may be watching this, we want to welcome you to the program. Listen, if you're new, first time joining us, somebody invited you in, let us know in the comment section below that you're new and where you guys are joining us from. We'd love to acknowledge you. And of course, we want to welcome everybody on Apple and Spotify. Thank you for taking this time out <clears throat> to be a part of our program as well. Uh, a couple things real quick, guys, before we get started on today's program. If you've not downloaded our free app, we want to encourage you today to pick it up today. If you're watching the visual of this, if you'll go to the description of this video, there will be a section where it says download our free app. All you got to do is simply click on that link. It's going to take you, it's going to open the page. And if you have an Apple phone, you have an Android phone, you click on that image, whatever that is for you. And then you can download our app free from your store and then hit yes to push notifications. And you're going to be good to go and squared away. And of course, uh, can you do me a favor, guys? Smash that like button, hit that push notification, hit that bell button, because uh, we don't want you to miss any of our programs, and we want you to help us get the word out uh, on these algorithms, uh, on Rumble and YouTube and wherever you may be watching or listening to this program. So I want to talk about something that, that I think is very intriguing, and I believe that our audience will find this very intriguing as well. Um, I want to give you some verses of Scripture and then we're going to get right into tonight's topic. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 16. Again, if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of John, chapter 16. I'm going to be reading this from the New King James. Uh, this is what the Lord spoke, and he said, These things I've spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. Come on, we were created not to stumble, not to fall, but to endure, to persevere. He said, uh, These things I've spoken to you, so that you not, so that you should not be made to stumble. Now listen what he says here. This is a warning, guys. Somebody say a warning. He says they will put you out of the synagogues. And now remember, this was written to a predominant Jewish audience. Okay, this is why he says synagogues here, because again, it was a predominantly Jewish audience. So if we were put this into modern vernacular today, he would Jesus would literally say they will put you out of your church. They'll put you out of churches. They'll put you out of synagogues. They'll put you out of buildings. They'll put you out of your gathering places, even your homes. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he's offering God service. Now, he's talking about the highest level of persecution. And we're, we're going to touch on this today, and I'm going to show you two movies that I think are cryptic harbingers and previews of where we're going as a society, how be it, especially America. Again, this he is speaking of the highest level of persecution. He's talking about martyrism. And he's saying there, the time will come when this will happen. Now, we know history will confirm that uh, the, the, the original disciples all suffered um, some very um, horrific persecution. Many of them were crucified, boiled in oil. They were filleted like fish. They were torn apart by horses. I mean, it was absolutely horrific. So it came to pass. They were, they were expelled from cities. They were dispelled from synagogues. They were removed from churches from where in which they try to preach the gospel all over the regions. And this is nothing new. We fast forward and we come thousands of years later. And it's still happening. Now, again, I've, you've heard me talk about this. America, um, is, thus far, we have kind of, we've been exempt from that level of persecution. Now, are we seeing persecution? Yes, but not on the level of martyrism or this physical, like this kind of extreme, extreme persecution that Jesus is warning about here 
in the book of John. Now he says here, and let me go back to the, the verse here. Verse three, this is John 16, three. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Now let's read on. But now, verse five, I go away to him who sent me. Now this is where Christ was about to ascend to the father, to where he would eventually be seated at the right hand of the father after the crucifixion. And none of you ask me, where are you going? But because... I have said these things to you. Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the parakletos, the comforter will not come to you. This is the, this is Holy Spirit. He is not an it. He is a he. He will come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Listen to this. And when he has come, He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they did not believe in me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Now, let's go on down here. We're almost done here and then we're going to get into some talking points today. I I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth comes or has come, and he's here today as of the recording of this broadcast, the Holy Spirit is here. He is here. He is in the earth working through the body of Christ. When you're born again, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. He comes in you, lives through you, in you, and works, come on, the works of Christ through you, if you allow him. The Bible says he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, Now, here's where I want to home in here. He will tell you things to come. Future tense. Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Future tense. Now, why did I I start this program out with this, uh, this foundational scripture, this passage of scripture? There's two things I want to point out in this the entire passage I read out of here of John 16. Number one is that persecution of believers, Christians, is inevitable. We, uh, you may be listening to th- this broadcast from the West and you're comfortable. You, you may have this false sense of security that the persecution in which our brothers and sisters are uh, dealing with outside of the West, as far as the the martyrism, the threats on their life, incarceration. You may think that you're exempt from that because you're blessed to be in the West. But again, I've got news for you. Based on, watch this, the Word of God, based on history, and John 16 says the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. He's going to warn us, watch this, of events and things that are way out in the future, even though it could be six months from now, six years from now, or 16 years from now. I believe with all my heart, you listen to me, that if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, Jesus said it like this. He said, my sheep, know my voice and the voice of a stranger they know not and they will not follow if you're in tune with the holy spirit you're in communion with holy spirit you are in your private devotionals you spend time in the word of god you spend time in prayer you spend time in his presence you have become familiar and acquainted with Come on, not only the Father, but the Son and in communion with the Holy Spirit. And I've come by to tell you today, despite what sensationists want to tell you, there is a place in God where there is an intimacy in God where when you get into his word, get into his presence, get into prayer, the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you things about the future. He'll he'll show you things about your personal life. He'll reveal to you things 
that you may not even know about now. You could be in a place where you've been praying about working. You've been praying about getting a job and this door opens and it comes with a lot of money and it comes with great hours and it comes with great benefits. But what you don't know and Holy Spirit knows is there is corruption, money laundering and immorality on the highest level at your, at your job and your place of occupation. Now, you don't know this because you don't have access to those places to see that. But guess who does? God. Holy Spirit sees this. So you're in your prayer time. You're, you are interceding. You're spending time with the Lord. And all of a sudden, he begins to reveal this to you. Now you now it's up to you what you're going to do with it. So you write this stuff in your journal. You are you're grieved over this. You're sick over this, but you pray over it and you just give it to the Lord. And I'm telling you, if the Lord revealed it to you, come on. The word of God says whatsoever things are done in secret shall be made known in. Come on in the public arena, whatsoever things done in, in the stealth of darkness shall be made known in the light. So eventually that stuff is going to come to light because the Holy Spirit is not going to lie. He's not going to tell you these things if they were not true. He will, he will many times, he'll warn you of appending dangers and disasters that you don't see coming. You and yourself may plan a trip to go here or go there and You've got everything planned out. You've got your vacation time put in. You've got all your stuff put away. You've got your uh, you've got your kids all ready to go. You've got your suitcases packed up, and you're ready to hit the road. And so everybody comes together. You start praying, and all of a sudden, in your prayer time, it's like you get this check in your spirit, and it's almost like the Lord is speaking to you in your prayer time and saying, I don't want you to leave today. I need you to leave tomorrow, and you can't understand this. You start wrestling with this. You get into an argument with your family because your kids are like no we want to leave now we got to leave now your husband's like why are we waiting tomorrow we've we've already taken five days off and now you're going to waste one whole day where we could be on the road because because you're saying that we don't need to leave tomorrow and you're saying i don't know i'm just telling you i i felt like i heard the lord say this so eventually after a big wrestling match you stay home or you delay the trip for 24 hours only to find out you leave the next morning you don't understand what it's all about. You click on, you turn on the news and find out that if you would have left 24 hours prior, you would have been directly involved in a 10 car pileup on an interstate where you would have been right there in the middle and you could have lost your life. But come on, the Holy Spirit saw all the way into the future. Oh, I'm in the word. He shall show you things to come. And you say, brother Ricky, what does this got to do with today's topic. I'm glad you asked. See, listen, if you're new, I know you think I've gotten way off course, but everybody that knows us by now are familiar with our ministry. They know when I take these side roads, I promise you I'll get us back to the main road. So let's get there now. I believe, listen, we give the devil a lot of credit. We blame the devil for everything. Oh, come on. Who am I? I want to talk to somebody today. Christians are the worst about this. We blame the devil for all kinds of stuff in our own personal lives that is our own demise. And, and the devil had nothing to do with it. Come on. We blame him because we're work because we're late to work three days a week when it was never the devil's fault. It was our own fault because we stay up way too late and we get up way too early and we're burning the candles on both ends and so we are like a zombie getting up in the morning, hitting a snooze button 15 times, taking a late shower. We're already running 10 minutes late. We get on the interstate where we've got our, the gas mashed to, come on, we've got the, the pedal mashed down, trying to beat traffic, b breaking the law, speeding, trying to get to work because we couldn't get up early. We get pulled over and we blame the devil. Come on. So th we, we blame the devil for that. Well, the devil's on my back. He, I got got pulled over today i didn't get enough sleep i didn't this i was late for work and the devil had nothing to do with it it was your own demise i'm telling you if you'll do a self-examination a lot of the things that we blame the devil for is us 
And the New Testament, the Apostle Paul deals with, when he talks about writing letters to the churches, he deals a whole lot more with personal, fleshly, carnal nature than he does with spiritual warfare. I'm not denying spiritual warfare. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. And I'm not saying it's something that we should know about. But what I'm trying to tell you is that predominantly most of the stuff that we deal with, that we go through, and that we blame the devil for is never the devil to begin with. It's us. So we, here's what I'm, this is where I'm going with this. We give the devil way too much credit We believe all of Hollywood is owned by the devil. So the devil can, only the devil can speak through movies. Only the devil can speak through music. Only the devil can speak through productions. Only the devil can create. He has the only, he's the only being that has the ability to have creativity and to speak to people through the airwaves and through the masses and satellite radio and internet and all this stuff. When guys, listen to me, could it be possible that even God can speak to a civilization. He can speak to a people. He can speak to a world the same way. Who who are we to say that God can't speak through a movie, can't speak through a song, can't speak through a, uh, come on, a production, can't speak through something that, you know, that we use. Look, for example, you know, Remember, a lot of the old timers used to say, well, the Internet is evil. Television is evil. Come on. All the smartphones are evil. How many grew up? You know what I'm talking about. But the old days, they used to say that all the time. So it was forbidden to have televisions in their home. They couldn't have the Internet. All this stuff was evil. Well, friends, listen, if it wasn't for that technology, you would not be listening to this podcast today. So the television in itself is not evil. The internet in itself is not evil. A smartphone in itself is not evil. Social media in itself is not evil. These are simply, come on, these are simply uh, devices that can be used for good or for evil, depending on what they're being used for. So having said that, I believe, listen to me, as we get closer to the end of the age and the second coming of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who, again, knows all things of the Father and relays them to the church and will show us things to come, Come on, don't get nervous. I'm not I'm not about to tell you that the Holy Spirit's going to give you a date and when the rapture's going to happen because listen, that's not going to happen because Jesus said that he doesn't know, the angels don't know, and only the Father knows. So that ain't going to happen. No person on the earth is going to, is not going to know the the day nor the hour that the Lord's going to come back. If it's being held from the Lord Jesus Christ and the angels in heaven and only the Father knows, there ain't nobody going to know. I don't care wh- how many books they publish or how big their podcast is or how much influence they have. It's not going to happen. So don't get nervous on me. Don't lose me. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, though, When we enter into major transitions, whether it's transitions of empires, kingdoms come, kingdoms fall. The book of Daniel said it's the Lord who raises up kings and he sets down kings. So, for example, we're we're heading we're in election season. So this November, many most I pray, hopefully most of us go to the to, to the polls and we to. Uh, and we do our civil duty and we vote. We're, we're going to vote in the next president of the United States. Well, listen, there's somebody that already knows by his divine sovereignty and because he is omnipresent and omnipotent and all-knowing, he's the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the alpha and the omega. Somebody knows already who is going to win that election. And that that somebody is God, Yahweh. And being that the Holy Spirit is with God, the Holy Spirit is going to know this as well. So there is, now watch this. I believe there is people out there, legitimate, genuine people that hear from God. You probably won't see them on TBN or Christian broadcasting television networks, but I'm talking about real people 
like real intercessors, real prophets of God who you and I probably never will never meet. Uh, they're probably in a mountain somewhere. They're in valleys somewhere. They're somewhere completely off grid. They're not on the internet because they're, you know, and I'm again, it sounds like I'm kind of contradicting myself, but you know, these things, social media, and all this stuff is good. They can be used for good tools, but they're very distracting as well. But watch this. Don't miss my point. There's, there is people out there, guys, that already know by a word from the Lord, the Holy Spirit has already revealed to them who the next president is. Now, we know that in the 2020 election, a lot of these so-called prophets got in a lot of trouble because they all said, thus saith the Lord, when the, lo the Lord never said. And it completely ruined a lot of their reputations and their ministry. So that's why you don't see me. Listen, there's things that God has spoken to me in private that I will never speak publicly unless the Lord releases me to do that. So here's the point I'm trying to make. If there is major events on the horizon, this is where I want to go with this. Don't you think the Holy Spirit already knows? And don't you think if he knows, he is going to reveal to a praying and interceding body of Christ who is asking the Lord, come on, when was the last time you got in your prayer closet and you had a journal in your hand and a pen and you asked the Lord, Father, reveal to me things of the future so I can prepare accordingly. Lord, if there's coming disasters, I need to know so I can prepare accordingly. Lord, show me what's to come. Guys, the problem is we've been discouraged from pulpits to ask God for such things because they're trying to convince us that God doesn't reveal to us today that he can that he can show us these things. And I've come by to tell you today that God does desire and God will show you these things. Come on. It is though it is the glory of God to conceal a thing and it is the glory of kings to search it out. Come on, there is hidden treasures in the word and in God that will only come to those who diligently seek him because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Come on, I got to, listen, I've gone way too far in this or too long. I got to get to this point right here. Ready? Come on, don't lose me. I promise this is going to be good. And, and, and you may be blessed by it already, but so if you've not noticed there is there has been a lot of quote unquote what we would call predictive programming that is being released through Hollywood and production. And I'm talking about movies, television programs, series, whatever the case would be, that we, what we call predictive programming. These I call it sneak previews of things of the future that is revealed through these venues through movies, television, series, and so on and so forth. For example, how many way all before, listen, we've not had a, we've not had a, a comet hit the earth. We've not had an asteroid hit the earth in our lifetimes, but we've already been preconditioned for it. How many movies have they been out? Have they already released to condition you for the for that event when it when it does watch this when it does happen? Because according to the book of Revelation, there's coming an asteroid and it's from the Greek word astar called Wormwood. And it will hit the earth during the tribulation, but we've been conditioned for this event before it's ever taken place in the natural We've had movies like Armageddon. We've had Deep Impact. We've had the new movie with Jared Butler in it, Greenland. So we've had all these movies, 2012. We've had all these movies as preconditioned. And then the alien, quote unquote, alien invasion. You had Independence Day. You had The Day the Earth Stood Still. You had uh, the movie with Tom Cruise, uh, the war, war of worlds. Yeah, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Then you had, they've been warning us about the, the day that San Andreas would blow. So they even made a movie called San Andreas. So these are what I call, um, these are what I call predictive programming. They're conditioning society to accept the inevitable when it does, when it takes place. Okay. 
Asteroid strike, I've told you, Revelation, that's coming, Wormwood, uh, a quote-unquote alien invasion, that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, lying signs and wonders. It talks about uh, there will be a great deception there. There will be a falling away. I believe all that's going to be there with the, this, this is all demonic. Uh, I believe it's a matter of, of when, not if, the San Andreas does blow. The Bible talks about mega quakes. It talks about the, uh, the, 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 the waves and seas roaring. So all these things are conditioning for us. So uh, watch this. Just like for years, you've seen these conditionings. Now, me, so now let's, let's talk about this. Right now, we're in, we're, uh, we're in the end of March, going into April. We're in 2024. What is in the atmosphere right now? What is on the lips of of talkers what is in the lips of politicians what is uh what is it's almost like a spirit that is covering the the entire west right now and it's the talk of civil war and consequently they're one of the movies now again if you watch the intro of this i'm talking about two movies one is coming out next month and it's actually called civil war and consequently it's a war based on and, and, and they even called a dystopian film that is based on a team of journalists who are traveling across the U.S. during the rapidly escalating Second American Civil War that eventually engulfs the entire nation of America. The film documents these journalists to survive during a time when the government has become a dystopian dictatorship and partisan extremist militias regularly commit war crimes. This is the whole, this is the whole premise of the movie. And this, and this is what's again going to be released next month. Again, predictive programming, because listen, if you've watched any talking points, the pundits are talking about this. Look what the mainstream media is just stirring the pot on and fueling. It's all there. There's a lot of people, guys, that are stoking the flames of civil war. But then I found this very intriguing. This there's another film coming out that's being released this year. And look at this headline, guys. I'm going to read this headline for you guys in uh, listening by podcast. Quote dystopian America where Bibles are banned, believers are forced into underground church, new movie imagines absolute horror. Again, there is a new movie that is going to be released that depicts a dystopian America where Bibles are being banned and believers are being forced into underground church. I want to read a little bit of this. Guys, I would love to show you the video clip but I don't want to get flagged with a copyright. So we're going to read this together. Picture a dystopian America where Bibles are banned, Christianity is vanquished, and believers have been forced to embark on a perilous journey to worship Jesus in underground churches. Well, guys, everything, this whole description right here, you know what this is a picture of? This is China. This is how Christians live every day in China. Every day. But now we're talking about, again, this is a picture of what could come to America. That's the world characters face in, and this is the name of this movie, Disciples in the Moonlight. It's a feature film releasing this summer. According to an official description, the movie focuses on a reluctant leader who heads up a team of seven Christians intent on smuggling Bibles to underground churches. The action-packed trailer shows a world devoid of truth where characters risk it all to exercise and live out basic beliefs. Uh, the director, who is Brett v Varvel, who also stars in the movie, told CBN News that, quote, Disciples in the Moonlight has long been a dream and passion project. From the beginning, I wanted to lift high the word of God as an absolute authority and something that we should hold highly as absolute truth. Quote, but then also the name of Jesus Christ, which is the only name under heaven given unto mankind, wherein which we be might be saved. Again, you can watch if you go to. Uh, faithwire.com. You can go to our main website, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. You will, the, the trailer will be there and you can click on it, and watch it. Uh, the director went on to say that he found himself wondering how would he respond if placed in the same position as the characters in the film, a real life 
predicament many Christians around the world face in persecution saturated nations like China, North Korea, and Nigeria. Quote, I saw this video on YouTube of these Christians in China receiving a shipment of Bibles and they were pulling open the boxes and ripping the Bibles out of the box. He said, kissing the Bibles, hugging them and crying over them. Now, again, I pointed this out, guys. Again, that's in China. So in China, they're ripping the Bible or the book. They're ripping the boxes open, grabbing the Bibles, hugging the Bibles, kissing the Bibles and and. Uh, embracing the word of God, but yet here in America, we're punting them off a stage for Super Bowl parties. He went on to say that this was something that really struck him. And he said, quote, and this is a question he asked himself, do I treasure the word of God as absolute hope, absolute authority, and absolute truth? Wow, what a statement, guys. Reflecting on the intense persecution so many face globally, he said it is inspiring to see so many cling to the gospel even amid such heavy persecution. Now, I want you to hear this indictment. I'm going to pull this up so you can read this with me. We're, I'm going to pull it up on your screen for you guys that are watching the visual of this. Quote, I look at the Church of America and I see apathy. And so far, for me, it was the exploration of why is that the case? Why is it in a land where we have so much freedom, we take so much for granted? Why are we not bold in our faith? Why are we ashamed of the gospel? Why are we ashamed to even pronounce the name of Jesus as our only hope and our Savior? Varvel said that, he went on to say, those introspective questions remain with him as he worked on Disciples in the Moonlight. The filmmaker said the film's primary purpose is not to warn people that freedoms are in danger, but I will. I'm going to tell you that our freedoms are in danger. So that was not his intent, but that is definitely my intent because I'm going to show you some articles here today. When we get done with this, I'll show you some headlines and show you that I believe what he... I know what his intent is here about cherishing the word of God and just breaking off of the apathy and not taking for granted the freedoms that we have in America. But I'm going to show you the prophetic side to this, because remember, that's the whole theme of this. The Holy Spirit, watch this, will show you things to come, right? So just like we give credit to the enemy and a lot of the productions and movies and cinema and music and all this stuff as him showing his hand. Showing the enemy is exposing his hand, playing his hand to reveal again through predictive program what he's programming, what he's about to do, and what he's about to do in the earth. I believe the Holy Spirit can have his way through a producer uh, who is filled with the Holy Spirit, loves the Word of God, knows God, and is producing movies such as this. You don't think the Holy Spirit can have his way in that, and you don't think that this could be a way that God is giving yet another and possibly a final warning to an apathetic nation of believers that, listen, you better not take for granted the days of freedom that you have now because the net is closing in and it's closing in fast. The producer went on to say, I wanted to challenge people to evaluate their heart and to ask themselves, do I even adhere to absolute truth? Because we live in a society right now where people are saying, quote, I'm going to redefine what is true. So again, this is awesome, guys. This is a great, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to seeing this film. I, I guarantee you, I will watch it and I'll give you a review on it here. He says in the end, he hopes that this movie will be a love letter to the church to wake up and make the most of the days the Lord has given and of the freedom that has been secured. Now look at this headline. I want to shift gears. Look at this headline. This is from India. Quote, we will not allow it. Church-run schools in India reportedly have been ordered to remove all Christian symbols. Again, church-run schools in India have been reportedly ordered to remove all Christian symbols. According to the report, a Hindu group in Assam, India, has given Christian schools in the state a 15-day ultimatum demanding the removal of all faith-related symbols and images of Jesus and the mother of Mary. One president of the Hindu group uh, is reportedly concerned that Christians are using the schools to evangelize. 
uh, quote, Christian missionaries are converting schools and educational institutes into, quote, religious institutes. Uh, and he again, they made this statement in a press conference, quote, we will not allow it. This sounds like something right here in America, doesn't it? You know, under the whole guise of separation of church and state, according to local media reports, the Hindu group is demanding all imagery uh, referencing the Christian faith be removed from the Catholic schools within 15 days. They are also ordering priests and nuns to stop wearing clerical clothes and habits, respectively, and calling for the closure of churches on school campuses. Then you go, and then in Germany, the Christians there are warning against a bill that they're drafting that aims to crack down on pro-life prayers. According to the report, Christians in Germany are expressing their concerns over a proposed bill that aims to establish censorship zones around abortion facilities potentially penalizing pro-life prayers and offers of help uh, with fines up to $5,6300. The bill criticized for its vague language and questionable necessity seeks to prevent actions the government deems, quote, confusing or disturbing within 100 meters of such facilities. Again, you say, well, that's in Germany, but this has also happened in the United Kingdom. And again, if you're seeing this, guys, in if you're seeing this in the UK and you're seeing this in Germany, it is naive to believe that this is not coming to America. Now, one of the things I found interesting when I watched that trailer of that new movie coming out, there is a scene in there where the, they, they talk about how the Bibles are deemed offensive. And they're deemed to be hate. They're filled with hate. How long have I been warning about this? Come on, hit me up in the chat. Let, listen, y'all know that I've been on this horse for a long time and riding this horse all the way to the sunset. I've been telling you that this will be, the Bible will be the center of all the ammunition that they need to bring about these bills and legislations to silence Christians in America, to bring about persecution in America. And again, it will all come down to what's written in these 66 books of what we call the Bible. And they will deem it as hate crime, hate speech, bigotry, divisiveness, division, all that stuff. It'll be right there. And all of this, guys, is leading up again. I understand proper interpretation of Scripture. John 16, Jesus was in proper context. He was talking about the disciples of his day. And you go to the Bo the Fox's Book of Martyrs, and those disciples met their fate, and many of the, and, and they were all martyred, with the exception of John the Apostle, who they tried to martyr, or John the Revelator, excuse me, but they couldn't kill him because Jesus kept him alive long enough. Come on, to see the second coming in the Spirit and to coin and write down the book of Revelation that we know of. But again, this was not just written for them, but it was for all who bear the name of Christ. All. And Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you so that you should not be made to stumble. Because the time will come when they're going to come after you in your churches, come after you in your synagogues, come after you in your meeting places. They, they will try to eliminate you and remove you and your very existence because of your faith and what you believe in. Now, that brings up one last point. Well, Brother Ricky, I can't believe you're even talking about this. I can't believe you would even discuss this talking point. Because after all, aren't you pre-tribulation rapture? I am. But again, I've told you that I, I stand different. I am not the cookie-cutter pre-tribulation rapture preacher that most of these individuals are. My views are different. I believe, even though I'm a pre-trib rapture believer and teacher, I believe, listen, what you call the wrath of God and what I call the judgment of God are probably two different things. When, you know, when we're talking about the judgment of God, we're, we're seeing that now. We're living, we're seeing and experiencing uh, selective judgments in the earth. Not just America, but in the earth. But when you get to the seven-year tribulation, my friend, that is the wrath of Satan and the wrath of God. When you Again, when you get in the tribulation, where in which John sees these vials opening, these bowls opening, the angels ascending, all these, the four horsemen, the apocalypse, all this stuff taking place. Guys, that is the wrath of God and the wrath of Satan. All that is in there. 
And again, when you go to the writings, when you go to the letters uh, that Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica, did you know that these were the first letters that Paul wrote to the churches? It wasn't Corinthians, it wasn't Romans, it wasn't Galatians, it wasn't Ephesians, it wasn't Colossians. It was the, the book of First and Second Thessalonians. And in the book of First and Second Thessalonians, the common theme that runs through the entire books is the coming of the Lord. And when you, um, and I got this pulled up here, First Thessalonians, the first letter that Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica, I want to read this to you. This is in First Thessalonians 1, 6. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. The early church received the word in much affliction. Come on, you listen, you want my opinion on it? The reason I'm going to kind of uh, go off what that brother said, the producer of that movie, and he says, it's amazing to me how much apathy there is in America. You know why? Because we're too comfortable. We're not seeing persecution for what we believe. Because there's no persecution, we become comfortable in our apathy. But the early church did not have that luxury. Paul said, you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. You know, you know what caused the early church to grow exponentially? Persecution. That's a fact. He said, you receive the word in much affliction and with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. You're, you're telling me you can actually say in the same sentence, persecution and joy. Yep. Because listen, you, you will not understand this unless you have that closeness with God. And again, because we're too, we're so comfortable and we're the Lagosian church and we think that we are rich and we are fat. And I'm not talking about physically fat. I'm talking about as in luxurious and, 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 and wealth. And we don't need anything. This is what's produced this apathy. But Paul says, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith towards God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything for they themselves declaring concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Verse 10, listen to it. And not only did you turn to the living God from idols, but watch this. And what does it say here, church? To wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So I listen, I yes, I believe that the church will not go through the wrath of God. Now, will they suffer through the wrath of Satan? That's questionable. Again, I'm not going to be dogmatic and say that that's not an impossibility because even the Bible tells us that Satan will come down with great wrath for his time is short. So listen, the bottom line is I believe the church, unlike a lot of my brethren that teach otherwise, I believe the church is going to go through, see and experience a lot more than what we have been led to believe. And you've heard me say that. So we could very well be here as the church under a dystopian government. Just like that movie portrays, just like we see in China. Because listen, I got news for you. Those Christians in China and North Korea and Nigeria, they haven't been raptured. And they're in, they're, they're in underground churches. They have to worship off the grid. They have to smuggle in Bibles. So again, just because we're Americans, we believe, well, we got to be raptured out before we ever get to that level of persecution. Friend, that's not the kind of, you're, you're, you've got this thing all messed up. I'm trying to bring, listen, don't get mad at Brother Ricky because I'm bursting your bubble of what you perceive, what was you're not going to see or go through. I'm just telling you. I believe that we are, as the body of Christ, are going to be here and see and experience a lot than what we've been led to believe. But watch this. Come on. I, want to, I don't want to leave you with gloom and doom and despair. I want to leave you with this. Over and over again in the Gospels, Jesus tells us, 
do not worry, do not fret. He says, don't worry about what you're going to say when you're brought before kings, when you're brought before the, the government systems of that day and those persecutions come and they rip you out of your homes, rip you out of your synagogues, rip you out of your churches, and they bring you before councils. They bring you before, come on, governments. He said, don't, don't fret and don't worry about what you shall say for it will, come on, what does he say? It will not be you who will be speaking, but it will be the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Hallelujah. It's going to give the Holy Spirit an opportunity. It's going to give God opportunity to get glory. Because we will stand we will stand trial and we'll be as Stephen, who when they were putting him on trial, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he had such wisdom and boldness. And the, all the way to the end, they stoned him to death. And while he was being stoned, he said, I see heaven open. I see the son of man standing at the right hand of the father. And that just enraged him more. And they just finished him off. But God received him. Come on into heaven by his spirit. I've come by to tell you today, friend, that listen, I'm not going to paint this rosy sunshine tulip picture that everything's going to be dandy. Everything's going to be great. And, and America is just going to be exempt from all trouble. We're not going to have any uh, disasters. We're not going to have any persecution and that stuff can never come. No, when I read the Bible, I see the exact opposite. I see that we're going into falling away. We're going into defection. We're going into uh, turning from the truth. We're going into darkness. We're going into apathy. We're going into captivity. We're going in all these things. Our enemies are rising against us. Everything's conspiring against us. The devil's coming down with great wrath. That's what I'm seeing in the Bible. But God, listen, I want to go back to what John said. What Jesus said in the book of John that John wrote, he said, I've told you these things beforehand so that you will not stumble. Come on, God doesn't want us to stumble in these last days. He wants us, come on, to make our face like flint. He wants us to be strong and full of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because you've got souls to win. We've got family that needs God. We've got neighbors that need God. We've got co-workers that need God. Come on, God has given us a window. God has given us a reprieve. God has given us this opportunity. Time is running out, yes. But he's given this, this time frame that we have, this open open season to be able come on to freely preach the gospel so it's time we rise up and do what God has called us to do in this hour and I leave you with Luke 21 28 Jesus said when you begin to see all these things coming to pass he said look up and lift up your heads for your redemption is drawing near hallelujah come on y'all receive this word today listen endtimeheadlines.org endtimeheadlines.com again if you've not downloaded our free app i want to encourage you to get that today it's available on apple and android devices hit yes to push notifications everything's going to be at your fingertips right there so you can keep up with our ministry hit that yes button or yes button. hit that push notification that bell uh button there on whatever rumble or youtube hit the like button smash that button please let us uh so that way it'll get our program out there on the algorithm and of course, guys, if this ministry is a blessing to you and you would like to give back, you'd like to sow into this ministry or better yet partner with us, you can become a monthly partner and you can do that two different ways. You can give electronically through the app right there. It's easy to do where it says donate. Just click on there if you have the app on the bottom or you can go to the main website, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com, and you're going to see where you can give electronically there or you can give by check or money order by making it out right there on your screen. At End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 1391, <clears throat> Monroe, Georgia, 30655. So, guys, we're going to sign off for tonight on this Thursday night, March 21st. We'll be right back here tomorrow night, Friday night, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we'll have another great program for you lined up. So, until then, may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, and may his countenance shine upon you. We'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.